So in this video, I wanna talk about some of the problems I've been having with the M1 Mac Mini. Now, I did another video where I discuss why I transitioned from a $7,000 MacBook Pro to a $800 Mac Mini. Now, after I made that video, I've been doing a lot of different work on this computer, and there's been a few things that have come up. So don't get me wrong, this is still a really powerful computer, and it's still my main editing machine, however, if you're gonna get into the Apple Silicon system and the whole new processing, you're gonna have to think about a few things before you make the transition. Now, the first thing that's a big issue is actually with the Mac Mini itself, and that is the Bluetooth connectivity, because if you're using the Bluetooth from the Mac Mini, it seems to not connect with your keyboard or your mouse. For a while, I was actually completely fine using my keyboard and mouse, and then it just stopped connecting. So like the mouse would be super jumpy or like I'd hit the keys and just nothing would happen. And this is actually a problem with Mac minis and this isn't the first model that's had these problems, but the Bluetooth just doesn't work right. So the solution that I found was I got a Logitech keyboard and mouse and these go to a Bluetooth dongle that I actually have on the back of my desk. And before I had this setup, which is a pretty minimalist setup, like there's nothing here, all of my cables run through the wall and they go to that closet in the back over there. And the reason for that is I like to keep a pretty minimalist setup. I don't like a lot of clutter on my desk when I'm working. I just feel like it's very distracting when I have all these things everywhere. And so I really like this minimalist setup. But originally, because of the Bluetooth issues, I did have my Mac Mini on my desk and I still would have issues. Even if the mouse was like from here to here, it still had issues. So the solution is to just not use the Bluetooth and I have an extension cable that's a USB extension cable that runs from my closet to the back of my desk and then I have the dongle just right here. So if you're someone that uses Bluetooth mouse and keyboard that doesn't have a dongle, you might have an issue with the Mac mini. Now the second problem is speed with the eight gigabytes of RAM. So originally I had just the base model Mac mini. That was the one I could get a hold of. And I, when I started working with it, it worked fine in all the software that I was using. Now I use Final Cut to do my editing. And the majority of what I do on my computer is video editing and photo editing, but more on the video editing side. And I'm a Final Cut user. So for the main piece of software that I use, it is optimized for the Apple Silicon. And the second biggest piece of software I use is Notion, and that is also optimized. But what I noticed is when I get into bigger edits, so my last video that I did that was a massive edit was my Pony Express documentary, that video took a lot of power. And I, I saw that as I was editing it, I kept hitting that eight gigabyte limit. So I actually went and got the 16 gigabyte version 512 internal storage, and now when I'm editing, I'm never actually hitting that limit. I'm staying around 12 to 14 gigabytes of RAM at most. So the 16 gigabytes is actually more than enough. However, the eight gigabytes will work. It just depends on your workflow. If you're very intensive with the amount of footage you use and the, the codecs that you're using, then yeah, the M1 eight gigabyte might not be the best solution. The 16 would be a better choice. I've had no issues at all with the 16. Any footage that I throw at it, it cuts it like butter. And I use the Sony a7S Mark III. It's not a very easy camera to work with on most machines because of the codec that you get out of this camera, but the 10-bit footage, I can play it smoothly in real time with full quality and I don't have any issues. And that's on Final Cut. It doesn't necessarily work on all pieces of software. On my last video that I made about this computer, a lot of people were asking about Premiere and Resolve and all the pieces of software are in different phases, but Final Cut is definitely the one that is most optimized for the Silicon system right now. So if you're a Final Cut user, this is definitely a computer you should consider. Now, one of the other big issues that I've had is the apps that work with this new system. Right now, not every app works. And for me, being a Final Cut user, there's a ton of plugins that don't work. So every time I open up Final Cut, I get this warning of this just list of plugins that just don't work anymore. And unfortunately, a lot of those plugins I want to use. 
So for me, I've had to kind of change the way that I work to do my edits until the plugins are gonna be available for the new M1 Max. So I've been able to make it work, but I wouldn't suggest everyone just jump ship and get this computer right away. You really need to dig into your workflow and the different things that you need to make your process faster. It actually might be better to stay with an older system and work in that ecosystem because all of the apps work versus transitioning to a new system and having to pick and choose what you're gonna work with because some things actually don't work that well. One other issue that I've been having is the ports that are available on the back of the machine. It's definitely much better than the MacBook Pro, which has two USB-Cs, but with the ports that are available on the back of the Mac Mini, I still have to have a bunch of dongles and extensions for my personal workflow. Because I work off of two monitors and I also work with a ton of different hard drives depending on the project that I'm working on. So my solution has been two main dongles. I have one that's a USB-C dongle that splits off into my monitor and gives me some more USB attachments as well. It's not the best, but it works for what I need. And it also has an SD card slot. And then the second dongle that I got is one for USB 3.0. So it's just an extension that breaks out into a bunch of different USB 3s. It's not gonna be the fastest transfer times and I'm not gonna use these two dongles to edit off of. However, it allows me to add a lot more to this machine. And that then leaves me two extra slots open, another USB 3.0 and then another USB-C. Now, I have the 512 version, which is more than enough to run the system. However, I can't edit off that. And one thing is, if you want to get the fastest edit time possible, you probably wanna edit off the internal storage. And I've noticed that the speeds are much faster if I edit off of that internal storage. So ideally, you would probably wanna get the two terabyte because then that becomes a machine that you can work off of internally. Whereas with the 512, I have to use external hard drive. And the one that I have is the Samsung T7, which works super well. It's a really fast SSD drive. I have a two terabyte of that. And that seems to be the best in terms of speed when it comes to editing. So I basically load up that drive with whatever project I'm working on and just edit off of that. And the reason that I went this route with the 512 versus the two terabyte is because I also have a MacBook Pro and I wanna be able to be mobile. So. Having my edit station here is great, but there's a lot of times where I'm not necessarily gonna be home and I still wanna be able to edit my projects. So for me, it made more sense with my workflow to just work off of an SSD drive and then flip between both my laptop and my system here in my office. Or if you just have like an edit bay and you just have one place where you're gonna be working, then I would suggest getting the two terabyte internal storage on the Mac mini because that's gonna be the fastest way to work off of this computer and then you also don't take up one of your USB C's. Now with this Mac mini, it's definitely much better than the laptops. Even my four USB C laptop MacBook Pro that I used to have, it's still better because it's got things like your network cable and your HDMI out. So HDMI goes to one monitor, the dongle, goes to the other monitor, and then that network out, I go to my Synology server, and that works super well for my setup. So what I basically have done is put everything in the closet. I have a rack case that I've built out there. It's got my Synology servers, it's got all of my hard drives, everything configured for the Mac mini, and everything plugged in, so I'm never having to actually go and plug extra stuff in. And I think that's important with a system is build it out in a way where you're not having to reconfigure things all the time. So dongle life is a real thing, even on the Mac mini, and it's something to consider, but if you're working off a MacBook Pro, you're gonna be in the world of dongles anyway. I think the only computer where you might not be in so many dongle world is gonna be the Mac Pro. This is a super cheap computer, for being one of the fastest machines that I've worked on. It's pretty insane the kind of speeds that you get when you're working in Final Cut Pro on a computer that costs so much less than all the other Pro machines. If you wanna see any of the pieces of equipment that I use to build my editing suite, I'll put a link down below in the description to a kit that has everything. And also if you have any questions about how to configure the Mac Mini, then go down in the comments and let me know down there. But next, I highly suggest you check out this video right here. It goes through why I switched from Panasonic to Sony. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, workflow is super important to me. So that's one of the main reasons that I've switched my entire camera setup from Panasonic's to Sony. All right guys, I'll see you over there.